Ladies and gentlemen, today I have the honor of tearing down and giving you the history of the Sega Genesis. Released in 1989, Sega Genesis came at a spot between Nintendo and Super Nintendo. It took the scene by being one of the first 16, uh, 16-bit home consoles. Its main competitor uh, within this generation of systems to begin with was TurboGrafx-16. But then shortly after that, in 1990, uh, Super Nintendo came out and pretty much put an end to TurboGrafx-16 and started a big console war with Genesis. There were other systems that you could have got at the time that were unbelievably expensive and never really took off, not only because of the price point of these systems, but because they just couldn't deliver games that were as entertaining as you get on these 16-bit games. Now, it should be said that uh, Sega was originally just a hardware manufacturer. They made arcade games, and they made good arcade games. And those suckers operated outside of Hawaii, and later moved to Japan. Anyways, the Sega systems, back in the day, were always advertised as being the most true to arcade. And back then, that's exactly what you wanted. All the good games were on arcade. And the closest a home console could get to an arcade, the better. What a lot of kids these days don't realize is that a lot of games were originally based on arcades. Arcades were a big deal back in the day. And even getting up to about the PlayStation time, arcades were big. But eventually arcades started falling apart because of how uh, the, the darker side... Kids would, kids would go there to uh, organize and orchestrate bad things, or older kids would go there to sell younger kids cigarettes. Uh, the dark environments didn't turn out too good, but on to happier things. Here we got uh, the Sega console. Again, this was probably the last good console that Sega had. Now, I always say I never really thought the quality was as good with the Sega as it was with the Super Nintendo. The Sega cost less, and because it came out earlier than the Super Nintendo, its its hardware wasn't all 100%. It Well, I can't say it wasn't 100%. It wasn't as 100% as Super Nintendo, because by the time Super Nintendo came out, they, uh, it was cheaper to make better parts. But then, of course, Sega games and Sega systems were cheaper. I got 10 bucks, at least in Canada. And then again, you also felt the pinch of that. It was pretty clear that most of the best games were on Super Nintendo. That didn't include games like Mortal Kombat, though. Mortal Kombat, all the bloody games you'd have to go to Sega for. You want family, you want Nintendo. You want to see a bit of blood, you went to Sega. Cheap, wet, bloody, and dirty. Wouldn't have it any other way, Sega. Now, later on, Genesis, or Sega, would really screw themselves up with really bad systems. They put more money into systems than they did to anything else. And they started tripping up when they made the Sega CD. And then they moved on to uh, the 32X. The 32X, I believe, was originally called Project Neptune, and it was only being developed and released in the United States. Japanese and United States companies for Sega were kind of out for themselves. Anyways, and there was a whole debacle with the, with the Sega Saturn that came shortly after that. No one was buying Sega systems because they were so unbelievably expensive and they were never getting uh, any more games. The, the Sega CD and the Sega 32X didn't have as much bang for the buck as you would have liked. And um, just so expensive and no one was backing them up. It seemed like every two years you're spending $500, I think it's $700 these days. And a new system that came out. Then Sega Saturn came around. And then Sega shot themselves in the foot by releasing it way too quick when nobody was ready, when nobody had any shell space available. And uh, ultimately pissed off some of their best uh, developers, working design, or best third party people. And then with one last step, Sega made the Dreamcast. And that was killed by Sony PlayStation 2 but only because the PlayStation 2 had a DVD drive. Now, not a whole lot to this. This is this is a, the second generation, 
or the second model, I should say, Sega. And one thing I'm noticing right off is we got a lot of wires going here and there. I mean, you always get your circuit board, but not too often in a circuit board do I see wires like this taped down. It almost kind of looks like uh, something was refurbished on this, like things weren't making a connection, so they put these wires here to, uh, to fix the connection. I don't see stuff like that too often these days on boards. And this wasn't uh, an earlier one, this was a later one. This chip here looks like looks like it was stuck on after the fact. It almost kind of seems as if this is modded. There's no way it could be modded. Who would care enough about a Sega to mod it? And uh, I got this out of Salvation Army on the other side of Canada about 20 years ago. One thing I should say about it, it still works. It still works. Easy to take apart. Phillips head screws. But man, that is really curious. It, it, it looks like a, a mod chip of some sort. Curious. That's really interesting. Man, I can't get over that. What's up, what's, what's up with that? What the heck? Did, did... Did they need to put a new chip on there? Did the old one break off? So interesting. Hmm. Well, I'm not sure what that's about, but pretty cool. If there's someone out there that knows about this chip, I'd like to know the story of that. Why is it like that? Usually everything on one of these circuit boards is, is perfect. You got everything exactly where you want it to be, but this chip looks like it was added there after the facts. Almost as if there was something wrong. Maybe throw that in. I bet there's a story there. But anyways, let me know if you know the answer to that one. And uh, hope you enjoyed this teardown. This is actually a functioning system, so I'm going to be putting it back. Um, one thing I should say is it was missing one screw, so maybe someone did get in here and do stuff with it. Maybe that is actually a repaired chip that broke a long time ago and somebody... Had it working, but I don't know. I don't know if you can tell me I love it. Anyways, have a good one, guys. Like and subscribe if you like what you see. Have a good day.